In the shadows of ancient forests and beneath the thunderous skies of forgotten eras, a sacred transformation awaited young men of Indo-European tribes. Stripped from the safety of their homes, they were cast into the wild where the line between man and beast blurred, cloaked in the dark pelts of wolves. Their eyes gleamed with the ferocity of the storm gods who claimed them. These initiates, no longer boys, roamed the wilderness like spectral hunters, their souls entwined with the primal spirits of the wild. Under the watchful gaze of gods of war and tempest, they were thrust into a final harrowing trial, a confrontation with a fearsome adversary, the very embodiment of chaos and darkness, mirroring the ancient battles waged by the deities themselves. Only through this trial by combat could they emerge as warriors, ready to claim their place among the tribe, to marry, to hold land, and to stand in the assembly as men forged by the storm. This opponent was usually a replica, a disguise representing the mythical adversary and held initiatory significance. As the initiate clashed with this symbolic foe, he transformed from a mere mortal into something greater. The initiate reenacted the mythic feat of a dragon slaying god. Epic poetry served to bridge the human and divine linking ritual and myth. Successfully completing a rite of passage transformed an individual into an adult man, paralleling the epic hero's journey from ordinary human to semi-divine. The pivotal battle with a monster wasn't a mere test of strength, but a transformation across human, heroic and divine realms. Through emulating the gods, the individual merged with the hero or deity, realizing their own divinity. I have written extensively about these rituals in the second volume of Slavic Traditions and Mythology. If you're interested in exploring this topic in greater detail, I highly recommend reading the book, as here I will present only a brief overview. But before we continue, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to my Patreon supporters who make this work possible through their generous contributions. Your support allows me to delve deeper into these fascinating topics and share them with a wider audience. Thank you for being a vital part of this journey. A ritualistic and symbolic battle with a monster can be found in various sources of Indo-European origin. The Mahabharata holds a description of Indra's victory over a three-headed monster threatening to destroy the entire world. Dumezil highlights key details in the description of this battle that indicate the three-headed creature's artificial nature. The creature offers no resistance, and after being struck by Indra, it merely collapses. Indra then leaves it to a passing woodcutter who cuts all three heads from which birds emerge. In essence, the creature is portrayed as a giant wooden statue, aligning with the notion that it was crafted by the divine craftsman Tvaster. We find a Norse example in Hrolf saga Kraka, where the hero Bjarki takes a young boy named Hjalti under his protection. Together they face a giant troll that, during the midwinter festival, shrouds the world in darkness, devastates the land and kills the best warrior kings. 
Pyarki calmly approaches the motionless troll and, with a single sword thrust, pierces its heart, killing it on the spot. Following Bjarki's plan, they keep the troll's death a secret, pretending it is still alive. The next day, when the king asks who will face the creature, Bjarki suggests Hjalti. Hjalti then kills the already dead monster effortlessly and despite the king's doubts, he is hailed as a hero. In a shorter version of this tale, as recounted by Saxo Grammaticus, Bjarki kills a giant bear instead of a troll. Therefore, this story includes the mythological motif of a real battle with a passive monster followed by a staged battle against its lifeless body. A similar doubling on a mythological level is found in the legend of the Norse god Thor. In his absence, the giant Hrungnir arrives uninvited at the gods' hall in Asgard, mistreats them and makes threats. When Thor is invoked, he arrives and the duel with Hrungnir is arranged. To protect Hrungnir, the giants create a clay double of him using a mare's heart. In the duel, Thor's shield-bearer Thjalfi easily defeats the clay giant while Thor kills Hrungnir. However, Hrungnir falls on Thor, trapping him until his son Magni arrives to free him. Again, this tale reflects a doubled conflict paralleling the ritual battle with a puppet and the myth of the storm god's victory. In the Persian epic Shahnameh, the hero Feridun tests his sons who have just won brides by disguising himself as a dragon. This test is symbolic of Feridun's own fame as a dragon slayer, a role in which he defeated the demonic Jahak and the three-headed dragon Dahaka in earlier myths. Feridun had withheld naming his sons until they proved themselves worthy. After arranging marriages for them, he disguised himself as a dragon to test their bravery and character. The eldest son wisely chose not to fight, the middle son prepared for battle, and the youngest boldly confronted the dragon. Pleased with their responses, Feridun revealed himself and named them. Salm, meaning benevolence, Tur, bravery, and Irai, meaning courage. These examples reflect remnants of a shared Indo-European initiation ritual for young men, also found among the Slavs. Similar motifs appear in Serbian epic poetry, where the groom or the best man, either alone or with his wedding party, must complete a series of tasks to win the bride. The final and most difficult challenge, often a confrontation with a three-headed dragon or, after the Ottoman invasion, a three-headed Arab or Turk, is typically not explicitly assigned but known in advance. This creature, often serving the bride's father, may be a mythological being or simply a disguised person or a movable doll. For example, in one song, the Arab went into the green forest where the roads of the Lord's suitors led. He sat down in the thicket there, placing three dragon heads on himself and on his back he wore wolf hides. 
When the suitors reached the thicket, the Arab emerged onto the road, spewing living fire from his mouth, thunderbolts crackled from his forehead, and a shower of arrows came from his nose. As the wedding party flees in fear, only Marko Kraljevic remains, standing beside the bride and cutting the Arab's head off. In truth, only one head, the one hiding his true identity matters while the others are mere hollow disguises. A prime example of this initiation trial is found in a song where the young hero Vuk, meaning wolf, encounters his uncle Marko Kraljevic, who, while not his actual uncle, plays that role in that song. The encounter's purpose is for the experienced older hero to instruct the younger in the arts of warfare. This reflects an Indo-European tradition seen in many Slavic examples where the uncle acts as a foster parent guiding his nephew through initiation into the arts of war. In this song, Vuk shares a duel with a black Arab who not only defiles brides and engaged maidens, but also amputates the arms up to the elbows of those who refuse to submit to him. He takes out the eyes of those who can't pay tribute and holds all of them tied to trees around his tent, tormenting them by starving and thirsting them. In the decisive moment of the duel, Vuk, meaning wolf, bites the Arab under the throat. He bit him under the throat, how easily he bit him, he shoved his teeth into the throat, and with his teeth he pulled the throat out. Then he frees the captives and brings the Arab's head to his uncle who is waiting for him. The black Arab, originally a three-headed dragon, symbolizes a ritual obstacle the young wolf hero must overcome following a specific mythological model like Indra's victory over Vritra, meaning obstacle in Vedic mythology. This is the first duel of the young hero, and this first duel of Vuk mirrors his uncle's, Marko's, feat in a well-known poem where Marko kills the aggressor Arab, thus removing a marriage barrier. The Arab's tyranny in this poem manifests in two ways, imposing heavy taxes on weddings and demanding a young maiden each night as his beloved, therefore disrupting normal relationships. In the poem, a desperate maiden contemplates suicide to escape the Arab's advances, and moved by her plight, Marco learns of the Arab's location, and despite overwhelming odds, sets out to defeat him, ultimately liberating the people from his oppressive rule. This narrative is a medieval reinterpretation of an ancient Slavic myth where the Arab was originally a dragon that restricted water flow and demanded maidens as sacrifices to devour, not for forced relationships. In the original pre-Christian Slavic myth, Perun, now replaced by Marko, defeated the dragon. Therefore, Vuk's encounter with the Black Arab represents a ritual initiation, echoing the primal myth of Marko, or more specifically, Perun, the dragon-slaying god akin to other mythological pairs like Thor and Hrungnir, or Feridun and his sons. In this brief analysis, we have explored two examples from Serbian epic poetry that highlight the ancient custom of ritual initiation, seamlessly aligning with other Indo-European traditions. However, this is just a glimpse into a much larger and fascinating topic, one that delves into Slavic wolf warriors, the concept of 
a warrior's afterlife and heavenly brides for those who fall in battle. I explore these themes in greater depth in the second volume of my book Slavic Traditions and Mythology, which I encourage you to check out along with my other works if you are eager to learn more. If you'd like to support my work, consider becoming a patron. Your support is invaluable and comes with various benefits for you as well. As a special thank you, I've included translations of the two songs discussed in this video, available as a free PDF download via the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in a next video.